Welcome to Surface Pro 3 TechReviews.com. I'm Neil, helping you shop smarter for your Surface. Today, I got a special video for you. Today, I'll be showing you my preview of the brand new Surface Pro 4. Not even released yet. Been hearing talk about the keyboards. Um, are they compatible? Can you put the new keyboard on your Surface Pro 3 or can you put your Surface Pro 3 keyboard on your Surface Pro 4? I show you that, I demonstrate that, as well as the pens and a whole host of other things. I start off in the beginning with some uh, technical numbers just to put them out there for you so you can compare between the Pro 3 and Pro 4 and then I get right off into the video, I show you that and then after that I'll have a little conclusion and summarize things for you so stay tuned and let's get right in it. And here are some technical specifications for those of you who like them. The size compared between the Pro 4 and Pro 3 are the same. The same height and the same length. 201 millimeters by 292 millimeters. The Pro 4 is just a little bit thinner at 8.5 millimeters versus 9.1 millimeters on the Pro 3, leaving it about 7% thinner. The weight is negligible. They are about the same. The um, i5 and i7 processor uh, builds will be not even 2% lighter, so about the same. Uh, both are made of magnesium. Both have the kickstand, traditional surface. The Both the uh, new keyboard and the surface pen on the Pro 4 are backwards compatible with the Pro 3. And they have also made a keyboard with a fingerprint scanner. So the Pro 3 users can take advantage of the Windows Hello and not have to log in using a password. Uh, the screen size is slightly bigger on the Pro 4 at 12.3 inches versus 12 inches on the Pro 3. About a 5% improvement, not too much. While the resolution is considerably better, the Pro 4 having a resolution of 2736 by 1824 versus the Pro 3 2160 by 1440 which means the Pro 4 has 267 pixels per inch and the Pro 3 has 216 pixels per inch. The pen is included in both models. Um, the pen on the Pro 4 has been uh, improved with leaving 1024 levels of sensitivity versus 256 on the Pro 3 model. And the cameras are, the uh, front-facing cameras are the same between the Pro 4 and Pro 3 at 5 megapixels, but the Pro 3 had a 5 megapixel on the back also, whereas the Pro 4 stepped it up a little bit with an 8 megapixel camera, so a little bit better. Battery life. The Pro 4 is said to get up to 9 hours of video playback. And the Pro 3 was said to get up to 9 hours of web browsing. Now even though both were said to be 9 hours, the 9 hours of video is certainly better battery life than 9 hours of web. So if you could get 9 hours of video on the Pro 4, then you should get much more than 9 hours of web time. So a good improvement there. There is our Surface Pro 4 on the left, and with me I brought my Surface Pro 3 on the right. I'm setting that up right now. I have the STM Dux cover on mine, which if I was thinking about it beforehand, I should have taken it off, but, but it's on there. So anyway, I'm getting mine fired up right now, and uh, they have the Surface Pro 4 on a just running through a demo of uh, you know the, the different features and improvements that they've made not only over the Pro 3 but just 
you know, in general, dude, Pro 4 is a very good machine. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm trying out the pen, the new pen on the old Surface, and it worked just fine. Um, here I'm comparing it. The new one, the Pro 4 pen is on the left, and the Pro 3 was on the right. And, um, and you see that the, you know, I was wondering, will the new pen work on the Pro 3? And it does. Does it still get the 1,024 levels of pressure? That I don't know. I wasn't sure about that. Uh, but I know it wrote really well, both on the Pro 3 and on the Pro 4. And here I'm trying to launch OneNote, but I think, uh, I think either the battery was dead in this uh, test pen that I was using or uh, maybe it wasn't paired I don't know but so I'm just opening up one note myself and uh, now I'm trying to write on there and now I want to try with the Pro 3 pen which is that one on the new Pro 4 and you see that's writing also so they are backwards and forwards compatible, which I think is incredible. Um, the Pro 4 pen does write very good. You know, I didn't get too much experience with it, but I know it did write very nicely. Now, I want to try the keyboards. Will the keyboards be able to swap? Can I put the old keyboard on the new Surface and the new keyboard on the old Surface? And that's what I'm doing now. I'm putting my old keyboard on a Surface Pro 4 and you see it attached just like normal no no big deal and there I am using it to type no problem now I'm hooking up my Pro 3 to the new keyboard and what am I doing I'm opening up Word going to a blank document and here I'm just typing out the classic, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog sentence. And the typing was really good. I got to say, they did a really nice job on the keyboard. I liked how the little space in between the keys, uh, it makes it more easy, um, easier to type on. You know, it's not like kind of bleeding through together. Even though I, th I thought the uh, Pro 3 keyboard was decent. But I definitely noticed the improvement in the typing experience with the new keyboard. And uh, it is very good. I do like it a lot. And uh, the keys don't seem to have that little bit of uh, wiggle in them either. Like on the Pro 3. They seem a little bit more sturdy. So I, I do like that too. And here I'm showing the back of the Pro 4. You notice that it doesn't say Surface on the back anymore. It just has the uh, Windows logo. And it has a really nice mirrored effect, which I think gives it a really polished, professional look. Beautiful job there. And uh, as you're going to see, they have... Um, oh, here I'm, I'm using the new power plug, and I just put it in my Pro 3, just to show that there is that backwards compatibility compatibility that we've been hearing about which I just think is so cool I think that's so good of Microsoft and uh, you know they really did a lot of thinking when it came to their surface line and um, so now I just I took the keyboard off and I want to see how how does it feel in the hands and it doesn't really feel all that much different from the Pro 3 you notice that the uh, sizes are the same identical only the Pro 4 is just slightly thinner and barely lighter so not a whole lot different on that perspective does give you a little bit wider um, they did shorten down the bezels a little bit which I can't say was all that noticeable but um, but it was there uh, let's see Notice also that there's no Windows logo on the bezel like there is on the Pro 3. And I'm guessing they removed it because, 
you know, when they did the Surface Pro 3 that was off of a Surface or a Windows 8, and you needed that Windows button to get back to the Start menu. Well, now since Windows 10, you always have that Windows button, so it's no longer needed. Here I'm showing the difference between the trackpads, the new and old. You can see that the, uh, the Pro Force trackpad is much bigger, and it is very smooth, very smooth, it, it, and it's very responsive. I, I really liked it. Um, I did notice that to be a really uh, a big difference, you know. So if you're a big trackpad user, um, you, you definitely want to consider upgrading because, you know, I think that's a pretty solid a pretty solid upgrade there between the uh, the keyboard is a big upgrade you know it's uh, much improved the typing experience is better the trackpad is larger it's more responsive it's made out of glass instead of plastic and you can even get one with a fingerprint scanner for your Pro 3 and that way you could still take advantage of Windows Hello by logging on your computer with just a password uh, I'm sorry, to log into your computer without a password and use your fingerprint instead. So, again, another well thought out uh, Surface idea. Instead of making you uh, go out to buy the brand new Surface Pro 4 to take advantage of that, they allowed backwards compatibility, found a way. And actually, if you remember in one of my previous videos, I even suggested that man it would really be nice if Microsoft would make a either a pen or a keyboard with a fingerprint scanner and look at that they did that how cool is that not that they've listened to mine <laughs> they didn't listen to my videos they didn't hear it from me but uh, definitely thinking on the same page and now I'm, I'm using it as a tablet and writing I use writing a lot you know I, I do and that's what really drew me to the surface to begin with uh, on the back of the pen is an eraser and this should erase it but it's not like I said I think either the batteries were dead or the um, or the uh, it wasn't paired so I grabbed the I grabbed the pen off of the one next to it and you see that one worked just fine but the only problem with it was that the tip was broken and I'm showing you that here but it, the camera wouldn't focus on it but the uh, the tip was people were just too aggressive with it, and uh, and it was it was broken. But the writing experience was very good. You know, I mean, I liked the Pro Three. I thought it did a great job of writing, and they only made it more refined and polished. And uh, you know, the difference, the almost four times greater sensitivity is wonderful. But I know just the um, that pen to paper feel is much more realistic with the tip on the new pen that is noticeable and i i did like that i thought that it it um they made it glide over the surface of the surface <laughs> uh very well there was a lot of people in the uh in the store where i was at so you know, and they were all looking at stuff, and I'm really thankful that Microsoft let uh, me and my friend here, um, you know, they just kind of let us have the run of it and do our our video review of it or preview of it, and uh, they did a really nice job. You know, I I was really impressed at at uh, at how liberal they were with letting us use everything. You see, I was changing over the keyboards, you know, trying the pen on my old one, everything. There's no problem at all. And there was no, even though you don't see around me, but there was no, uh, you know, there was no staff hovering over me or anything like that. Just, yeah, I was really impressed, real nice. And here I'm using the pen to uh, enter in the zip code to get the weather app to uh, show our current temperature. It's fall over here, so it's getting kind of cool. Um, which it's a little, it's all the way at the top of the screen. But what I'm testing is the magnet, and now I'm trying the uh, my Pro Three 
on the side of the surface and even though it's kind of cut off but it does not stick to the side of it very very weakly it actually the pro 3 pen sticks um stronger to the pro 3 than it does to the pro 4 but the pro 4 pen sticks to the pro 4 very well actually it's got a really strong magnet a really solid um adherence to it of course it's not going to be for uh you know that you can put in your book bag or something like that uh no you know yeah it'll fall off on the inside of there it's not that strong um but it does sit on there very comfortably and you know if you're just walking around and carrying it um well honestly i'd probably be a little concerned about it falling off even still but uh you know maybe just use it in your house or something it's a good place to put it, or even up and out of the way. It's something, you know. And like they said in the uh, in their um, online event, that you know it's hard for them to figure out what exactly to do with the pen because, sure, they could have integrated it into the tablet to where it slid in, like on the on the uh, Samsung uh, Note, you know, which they got a really nice pen system there, but it's very thin. And because Microsoft wanted to make that pen uh, handle and feel like an actual pen, they couldn't uh, they couldn't make it that thin, you know. So they had to make it at that same thickness, and you know that same thickness won't fit into the surface. So, so that was their dilemma, and I think they chose the right option. Here I'm just pretty much showing off the display, letting the display, comparing them. Very similar. Um, you could probably, you could see just a small, that small 0.3 inch of a difference between uh, the Pro 4 and the Pro 3. Not really huge though, but I think it is, you know, if you look closely, you could tell the, the bezel slightly thinner. You got a slightly wider um screen and the screen is beautiful definitely just like on the pro 3 only it's even more uh pixel dense so as good as it was on the pro 3 they went and made it even better see i had two apps side by side no problem just like on the pro 3 that's nothing big here I'm using, uh, I'm trying out some of the gestures on the new trackpad. And you see by the, uh, the three, the three fingers swiping in, that brought up the, uh, what they call like the task view, where you can switch between your different apps. And you see the, uh, the trackpad overall was really responsive. It really was. The slightest taps you know it was working here i um i'm playing one of <laughs> i'm playing one of my videos on the uh, pro 4 that's the review i did of the stm ducks cover which to this day is still my favorite case for the uh surface pro 3 and because the dimensions are all all the same except slightly thinner i'll be trying it on my pro 4 uh, when I get that. The Surface Pro 4 is available for pre-order and uh, won't ship until October 26, which, which interestingly is my birthday. And um, if you go to Microsoft's website, uh, you will see where you can not only um, you can select the one that you want, you know, with the right processor, amount of memory, and uh, the amount of storage that you want, um, ones that already have pre-configured. But then you could also, there's a small button that says Customize. 
And then if you customize or configure now, then you can really uh, select your different options that you want. And uh, I think some people go to the website and they say, hey, there's no, you know, there's no terabyte option listed on here. Well, no, when you first go there, there isn't. But if you do the customize button and then configure now, then you'll be able to see those different options come up and you can select the exact one you want. And again, I'm just testing out the that trackpad. And I think that works really good. You know, they did a nice job on that trackpad. I got to say, that glass especially is what really makes the difference. You know, it's not so uh, hit and miss, you know. And I'm sure that, you know, those inadvertent touches that the Pro 3 trackpad is so prone to I'm sure that'll be uh, improved too you know with this glass trackpad and there I put my uh, my video on and I just let it run its course and that was it there you have it there is my preview of the Surface Pro 4 now the big question is gonna be should I upgrade right uh, well and or should I buy? Maybe uh, people are watching this too that have never been in the Surface at all, Surface ecosystem at all. And uh, so there's a lot to think about. Um, for those who have the Pro 3, here's just a few of the bigger highlights um, that you get with the Pro 4. You get a, a greater resolution, a larger screen, which I know, it's not really that much, right? Point 0.3, that really isn't much. But it's, nevertheless, it's there. Uh, faster CPU, more storage, better battery life, and even facial recognition. Um, but for the Pro 3 users, two main benefits of the Pro 4 are the pen and the keyboard, and yet you can get both of those things and use them for your Surface Pro 3. So you can get the best of those two items and still keep your Surface, which again, I think is incredibly well thought out because that shows that Microsoft is investing a lot in this line of their product. So people who, you know, maybe they have invested heavily into other ecosystems, you know, for example, Apple or something like that. And uh, this should show them that this is something that is uh, very well supported and you know and in my opinion I think is you know you look at what they did with the dock if you if you saw that too you know now you can use their uh, their new surface dock with your surface pro 3 pro 4 and also their surface book but um, you know showing that backwards compatibility is important to Microsoft because they know it's important to us you know those peripherals or accessories are expensive and so having to get new accessories every time we upgrade you know not only is the machine itself expensive now we gotta you know upgrade and get a new dock and you know different stuff like that well now they all work with the same thing which is really great so now when the Surface Pro 5 comes out you know you're going to have your dock if you have one and it'll still work with that so it just shows that there's a longevity in this product and well supported and I think that's really cool and I think that's something that uh, people should consider when they're shopping around to get their uh, to get a computer for themselves whether it's an Apple or a Dell or Microsoft Surface whatever it is just taking everything into consideration uh, you know, there's a lot of good options out there, that's for sure, and it's just what bets, what's the best one for you, right? That's what we got to look at. Do share this video with your friends. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and leave some comments below. Let us know, let everyone know here uh, that watches, what do you think? Are you going to upgrade? Are you not? Are you going to be a first-time Surface buyer? 
which one which model you're gonna pick and so on let us know and uh, also if you want to take a look at a surface pro for yourself or even the band or the surface book uh, check out a Microsoft store that's where I went and um, only select ones will have that stuff already but call ahead that's what I did and find out if they have what you're looking for there and they'll have it on display you could go check it out yourself so uh, <laughs> thanks again for watching <laughs>